ATO. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. And we're at T minus nine minutes and counting, and the ground launch sequencer has been initiated. NASA test director John Guidi is about to call for the transmittal of stored pre launch commands as Atlantis is only nine minutes away from launch on a mission to the Mir space station to retrieve astronaut John Blaha, who has been in space now for the past four months. Very soon now, pilot Brent Jett will be flipping switches in the cockpit to directly connect the three fuel cells to the essential power buses. And the orbiter access arm is now being retracted away from the vehicle. This is the walkway used by the crew to gain entry into and out of the vehicle, and it can be returned to position within seconds if need be. As the access arm continues to be retracted, we're at T minus seven minutes and counting. And the orbiter test conductor, Ray Prost, has given pilot Brent Jett the go-ahead to perform, to perform the auxiliary power unit pre-start procedure. Jett will set the switches in the cockpit to put the three power units in the ready-to-start configuration. T minus five minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. T minus five minutes and counting. TLS is go for orbiter APU start. And we have a go for APU start. OTC perform APU start. APU starts at work. CDR OTC reconfigure heaters. Heater reconfigure is complete. The launch team is terminating the liquid oxygen replenished to the external tank. And the team is now initiating locks drain back. The solid rocket boosters and external tank safe and arm devices are being armed. Main fuel valve heaters on the three shuttle main engines are being turned on in preparation for launch today. The 
final purge sequence of the main engines is underway. T minus four minutes and counting. ELS is go for purge sequence four. The final test of the flight control services will be conducted next. This is a program pattern of movements designed to verify the readiness for launch of the engines and other flight control surfaces. And the three main engines are being gimbled as a final test before launch. T minus three minutes and counting, and all is going well for today's launch. This mission carries a crew of six who will spend the next 10 days in space, five of those days docked with the near space station. Final pressurization of the liquid oxygen tank located inside the external tank is now underway. The gaseous oxygen vent hood will slowly be retracted away from the top of the external tank. Memory verify no unexpected errors. The orbiter test conductor has requested that pilot Brent Jett clear the caution and warning memory system. Everything looks good and we're cleared for launch today. No problems are being reported from the vehicle or the crew. Flight crew, uh, close and launch your bikes, you need to do it OT, and on behalf of the launch team, have a great mission. Roger, I'll work, thanks. Feel less of space for ET, LH2, Pike Earth, 8 seconds. Roger, I'll work, thanks. T minus one minute, 45 seconds, and counting. One minute, 30 seconds. And all systems are go. Spatial Atlantis is about 90 seconds from beginning its 10-day mission to dock with the near space station. T minus one minute, 15 seconds. T minus one minute and counting. Everything is still looking good for launch of the shuttle Atlantis from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. T minus 50 seconds and we're transferring to orbiter internal power at this time. Atlantis is now running off of its three onboard fuel cells. Coming up on a go for auto sequence start. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Atlantis's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 15. 12. T minus 10. 9. 8. We have a go for main engine start. We have main engines up and running. 3, 2, 1. Boost to ignition and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Atlantis on a 10-day mission to dock with Russia's orbiting outpost. Houston now controlling the flight of Atlantis. Atlantis, welcome. Roger, roll, Atlantis. Atlantis into the roll to place the shuttle in a head-down wings level position for the eight-and-a-half-minute ride to orbit. Thirty seconds into the flight, Atlantis's three liquid fuel main engines now throttling back in a three-step fashion to 67% of rated performance. That will dampen the stress on the shuttle's aero surfaces as it breaks through the sound barrier.
One minute into the flight, the main engine's now beginning to rev up to full throttle, 104% of rated performance. The throttle up call coming up from spacecraft communicator Kevin Kriegel here in Mission Control. Minus, go at throttle up. Roger, go at throttle up. One minute, 20 seconds into the flight, Atlantis traveling at 1,500 miles per hour. Now 10 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 13 miles in altitude. The shuttle's three main engines, three auxiliary power units, three power-producing fuel cells, all functioning normally. One minute, 50 seconds into the flight, standing by for solid rocket booster shutdown and jettison that command to come from the onboard computers through the master events controller on board Atlantis. Booster officer confirms a clean solid rocket booster separation. Guidance now converging on Atlantis's three main engines as they begin to steer for a precise keyhole in space for main engine cutoff. Nominal. 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 Roger, performance nominal. Atlantis, two engine maroon. Engine maroon. Those calls from spacecraft communicator Kevin Kriegel to Commander Mike Baker aboard Atlantis indicating that the uh, solid rocket boosters provided the desired performance during the first stage of uh, this morning's ascent to orbit. And if one, en if one main engine should fail, Atlantis has enough inertia to make a transoceanic abort to Maroon, Spain. However, all three main engines continue to function by the book three minutes into the flight. 